Hello viewers, welcome back to the lab. This is part two of the restoration of this Quantel HAL um, video compositing system. Stick around, there's going to be some um, quite interesting things to see uh, because I've made quite a bit of progress um, and have uh, quite a few things to report. But first I want to thank my uh, patrons for all of their support. Uh, without them helping me and uh, putting money into the pot, I wouldn't be here making these videos and I wouldn't be here repairing this wonderful old technology. If you want to become a patron yourself, there will be links in the video description. So hopefully you've seen part one, uh, which was basically a brief description of uh, what the Quantel HAL is, what it was used for, and that kind of thing. Um, in this video, now I have got it powered up, um, and it is, or seems to be functional. So what I'm gonna do now is just rearrange the camera so you can actually see the machine as I start pointing things out and telling you about things that I've actually done to it. Now, one of the first things I wanted to do before I actually started work on this properly is just do some basic electrical checking. Um, obviously, this is 20-something odd years old. Um, it's been sat in um, a shed. It's been sat in um, what is effectively an old garage um, for a long period of time. So I actually wanted to do some basic sanity checks just to make sure it's actually safe to work on. Uh, and there's another reason as well, and that is because these actually have a mains filter um, on the input. And um, anybody who deals with uh, old vintage tech uh, will know all about uh, reefer caps and uh, Schaffner. Uh, mains filters and this does have one in so I did some basic checks using um, this which is a slightly modified um, standard power cable uh, mains cable um, it's just the, with the insulation cut away it means I can get access to the individual um, cores so I can just put a clamp meter around the uh, the mains input and actually look to see uh, if there's anything um, leaking out to earth, even when it's not switched on. And what that revealed was the mains filter, uh, the Schaffner, um, the Schaffner mains filter that was in there, that was bad. Um, so this was drawing about, um, I'm just trying to remember, I think it started off at about 15 milliamps and it was just going up and up and up and up and I switched it off when, when it got to about 22 milliamps. And that's about five watts. Uh, this thing was actually burning. So um, eventually, uh, before too long, that will suddenly burst into flame and there'll be big shooting smoke flying out at the end of it. So that had to be removed and replaced, which it has been. So that meant I could actually power up the machine and actually do some basic checks to the power supply. So what I did to actually test that was I removed all of the cards that I could um, just by simply, you know, pulling them out and you can just leave them there like that. It's not actually plugged into anything. So um, it's very easy just to pop the cards out and then you can turn on the power supply uh, with most of the things disconnected. As I said, I pulled out all the cards, disconnected the hard disks. Um, there's a video input and output card here. This was also uh, pulled out. So there's only really, really basic things connected to the power supply, things like the fans. Um, and I think there's a, there is a few components on some of the boards uh, on the highway, the back plane, uh, which will be getting power. So uh, that allowed me to power up the, the, the power supply and then I could go through and check voltages. Um, that was nice, simple, easy task to do because there's great big bus bars um, along the back here, um, which you can easily get access to. So I went through and measured all the, the five volt, the 12, minus 12, minus five, etc., etc. That all checked out fine. Um, so that meant I could then go on to um, actually trying to power up some more of the, the actual machine itself. So the first thing I did was uh, plug the hard disks in um, and just see if they, those actually spun up, which they did. Um, they didn't any, make any unusual clicking noises, so they seemed to be good. Um, next step was to plug home the CPU card, which is this one. You, saw, you see this in uh, part one. Um, this is actually a different board. Um, I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, so I pushed this home and that fired up and I was able to read the software image off the system disk, which is this one here. And once I'd done that, I was able to boot the main operating system. Um, there is actually two parts to um, the V-series paint box. Um, 
well, technically there's actually three. Um, there is a, um, a ROM monitor um, on the CPU card, which is but it's built into ROM. It's a very basic interface into very low level stuff on the actual uh, CPU card. And from there, it bootstraps the main software off the hard disk. Um, that is made up of two parts. Um, the first part is the main operating system, um, which is a multitasking um, operating system, which uh, Quantel developed themselves. And then there is actually the painting software. So um, through uh, knowledge that I've gained, um, I know how to um, load the software manually onto the CPU card. I can then boot only the operating system um, and not try and activate the painting functions. So it allows me to get a very basic operating system up and running. So once that was uh, booted into the operating system, um, first thing I went and looked for was all of the software passwords, which are stored on the hard disk, because uh, they need, those needed backing up. Um, so I went in and made a copy of those. Uh, the next port of call was to check the non-volatile RAM. Uh, on the CPU card, there is a battery-backed non-volatile RAM and a clock, um, which keeps the date and time and stores this, all the system settings. Um, normally, these are completely dead, but in this machine, um, the original batteries were still going. Uh, it's absolutely remarkable. I think this machine dates from 1996. Um, so the Dallas clock modules that were on, on that CPU card had done very, very well indeed. What it probably means is this machine has been powered up for a very, very long time. Um, the um, non-volatile uh, clock modules from like, the likes of Dallas and um, ST Micro, they only use the battery when the machine is actually powered off. So the more time the machine spends switched off, the quicker the battery in the non-volatile RAM will deplete and it'll go flat. So you tend to find if the batteries are still good after like 25 years, uh, which this will be, um, it means that this machine has been powered on for a very good portion of that time. So it's obviously had a lot of use. Because the non-volatile RAM was uh, all good, I was able to get a copy of that. Uh, so this is one of the first times I've actually managed to be able to get a copy of these proper settings um, and save them and they can be reloaded um, later down the line. So the next step was to plug all of the cards home um, and fire it up and just to see what happens when I try and run the painting software. So when this uh, actually booted up, um, it actually booted quite well, to be honest. Um, it didn't really report many errors, um, apart from the fact that there's no Dylan disk array attached to this. Uh, that's obvious because it's not working at the moment. But it all seemed to be fine. But the problem is on the picture, um, although I had a white painting um, screen, which was normal, the menus was, was just a, a rectangle of blue. Um, so it meant that um, one of the store cards uh, was faulty. Really, really good thing about these machines is Quantel uh, were fastidious about their engineering, um, not only the hardware, but the software as well. Um, it was very carefully written, well thought out, um, and it wasn't just like that on the outside, on the, in, the engineering side um, was just as good. And what uh, Quantel developed was a built-in test facility in these machines. It is extremely comprehensive um, and it allows you to pin down uh, faults on various things to a, an amazing degree of, of accuracy. The system is called Verify um, and it's basically, it's built up of modules. So you have a Verify module to verify the CPU card. You have a Verify module for the disk store card, the main store card, the keying card, the router card. Each one of these cards has its own sequence of, of tests that it can actually go through. Um, and I use that to have a look at the main store card which is the card that holds the menus, which was all it was doing was just showing blue. 
So that just reported um, literally hundreds of uh, RAM error uh, problems. So that was uh, obviously uh, indicating that uh, the card was absolutely dead. So what I did was actually take the card out and actually have a quick look at it. And it, uh, it wasn't very long before I noticed um, this issue here. You can see those, um, this blotchiness around here. The PCB has actually started to delaminate. If I get it in the light, you can actually see it's all bubbling and um, not very nice at all. It's uh, surprisingly bad. I've never, ever seen that before. Um, it's possibly because these were stored in not ideal conditions. As I said, they were, they've been in my shed for a little bit of time and they've been in effectively a garage lockup. Um, for at least 10 years, so um, that's probably what that is. So this uh, main store card is completely hosed, unfortunately. But the good thing is, um, I have a second HAL um, that's a bit of a spares bin. Um, it, although that other one is newer than this one, this one is in better condition, and I'm using this as my, this is going to be my HAL. <laughs> Um, eventually. Uh, so I managed to take a card, the same card out of that machine, plugged into this one, and um, that also had faults on it as well. So um, I had to go up into and raid my uh, spare supply, um, and thankfully I managed to find a card which passes verify perfectly. So that allowed me to get the machine um, pretty much working. As I said, apart from that it can't do video, it can, it's basically a very, very big and complicated paint box. The uh, only issue that I found was um, on the image card. Uh, when I was uh, went through and did some tests, I could manipulate something on the screen, but then all of a sudden the image card would just crash um, and then it would like reset itself, reboot, and then it would come back after about you know, 10 seconds or so. Um, the verify test for that card actually came back saying that the card was absolutely fine. Now, what I noticed when I was actually manipulating an image with the with the card was it seemed to do it more when it was like pulsing. Um, so there's particular things that where you actually move an object around and this the image card does a big lump of processing, then stops and then does a bit more and, then, and it um, ends up um, pulling quite a bit of current um, in quite quick succession. So my first thought was um, there's a power supply issue of some description. Right, let me just uh, take out the image card just so you can see it because it's quite a special card anyway um, and I know people always love to see it. So let's uh, just rearrange the camera again uh, so you can see the image card in a bit more detail. I can tell you what I did to actually fix the problem. So the image card is located just here. Let's pop this out. So as you can see, it's quite a remarkable board. Um, this was designed by Quantel in about 1994 um, and it was part of the HAL Express um, upgrade. Now, one of the reasons why they did the Express upgrade is because HAL was still using the original uh, CPU cards and the processing cards from Paintbox. Um, and it meant that the processing of video was actually quite slow um, compared to the other machine that Quantel had, which was the Henry. Um, Henry was far more advanced than HAL at the time um, and could process video far faster than um, a HAL could. Um, so the Express um, allowed them to speed up HAL a bit um, and it actually uses some of the cards from a Henry to help in that. Now the image card was actually made to replace um, what was known as CAP, uh, which was Contour and Perspective. It's a, a card which was designed to do 3D manipulation of images along with sizing and rotation and warping and all that sort of stuff. So this was designed to um, basically take some of the processing power out of Henry, um, put it into a cheaper package, um, and then put it into the, 
the how. Uh, so although you'd look at this and you go, that is not cheap, um, it's cheaper than a Henry. Um, that's the critical point here. There's a lot of processing on this one single card. Um, and overall it meant that it was a cheaper option than a Henry. And it still wasn't as fast as a Henry, but it was a lot better than the original HAL. So yeah, one of the remarkable things about this card is the number of FPGAs that are actually on here. They appear to make it look as if it's like massively parallel. And it is, it is quite a, um, a parallel processing card, but it's not quite as parallel as you possibly think. Um, there is actually 82 um, of these Altera Flex um, uh, APF 8282 um, FPGAs uh, on the board, but they're sort of grouped together um, in, in, in a way. So there is a group of them who, that process the luminance information. There's a group of them that process um, addressing of the stores which were in here. So um, although there is 82 of them on the board um, and apparently the guy who designed it uh, specifically made sure that there was 82 of them um, so it meant that there was 82 Altera 82 82s. It's kind of a funny story. As I said this does a lot of the video uh, processing doing 3D warps and um, spinning things around in 3D space and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's actually two parts to this um, there is the side that sits um, on the video input and output side so it can talk to all the store cards and the other cards in the machine and then there's the control section. The control section is actually like this bit here. Um, this is um, an Inmos uh, transputer. Uh, Quantel use these quite a lot on some of their cards. Um, this is a completely separate little computer. Um, it has its own memory so this is a little bank of uh, DRAMs. I think there should be 16 megabytes um, of RAM on there, which just runs um, a little processor here, which is connected to the CPU card by a special link. So during boot, the um, actual HAL operating system will load the software for this computer over the link and boot the um, image card then the image card can then talk to the painting software so the painting software can say um, take uh, this um, load of data and warp it in this way um, and it'll program everything and then do the processing and then answer back saying it's done that's basically how it works so um, what did i actually do to fix it well um, it doesn't take uh, much examination to see. Um, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, small SMD caps on here. And I figured these are 26 something years old. Um, they're probably getting a bit weak um, and maybe that's why it's having an issue. So I just went through and changed those. Um, it didn't take long, it took about three quarters of an hour to get them all off and replace them with new ones and that uh, problem went away. Um, okay, uh, what I want to talk about next is the verify feature. Um, I've, uh, I spoke about that earlier and I tried to explain a little bit about how it actually works um, and I thought it'd be nice to actually be able to talk about what it's actually doing and it's actually a good way to give you an idea of what um, a paint box actually is. So brief overview, you have all the dedicated hardware that does all the manipulation of all the, the data, which is either um, a static image or it's video. Um, a video is basically just a fast series of static pictures. So um, they're both treated in the same way. Um, all that dedicated hardware um, is controlled by the computer. Um, the computer is that CPU card that I showed you earlier and that connects to these cards and can tell this card to do um, a particular task. It can to tell this one to do something else and it can tell this one to do something else. And the way it works is um, when you say paint something, the CPU card is transmitting the pen um, location in, on the screen to these cards and saying the pen is at this location, I want you to paint. Um, with a particular brush into this portion of the frame store. 
and the hardware will take the brush out of the brush store and stamp it into the um, the stores as per required. Um, so there is a lot of communication between these these different cards depending on what you actually want to do. So uh, getting back to Verify, um, how does that actually work? The first thing that Verify does is to verify the um, disk and main stores. Uh, the way it does that is it writes data into the memory and then it reads it back. If it reads back the same as what it wrote in, then it declares the card is good. There's various other tests that it does do, but um, effectively that's what it's trying to achieve is to, to work out whether the store cards are functioning. Once they are actually functioning, you can actually do some more interesting things. Um, you may remember um, quite a few videos ago, I had a particular machine in the lab that was gifted to me from, from Quantel, um, and it was a machine that allowed you to analyze the SDI um, video data and actually generate checksums based on the actual picture. Now Quantel actually built that into the actual paint box hardware. So on the video output um, cards, um, you can actually generate checksums on the actual image data. So that means what you can actually do is once you've verified that the stores are, are good, you can then put a, a set known um, picture or data into that store and display it um, and generate a checksum from it. If that checksum is good, you know then that the store is good and you know that the video paths to the output is also good. So it's a way for um, you to slowly go through the machine and actually build up and say, that bit's good, that bit's good. And you can check more and more of the machine. Um, this is also true of things like the image manipulation cards. So you can take an image, place it into the store, and then you can um, manipulate that image in a known way that's going to generate a particular p image. Um, and that can be written into the, one of the other stores. Um, so you can take a, um, a bit of data, you can skew it and bend it and all that sort of stuff um, and place it into the store and then you can create a checksum of it. If that checksum checks out, then you know that the, um, the image card is working. Um, but you can actually go a bit more granular than that. You can actually just test specific functions. So you can test just size or you could just test chrominance or you could just test luminance or the key. So there's all sorts of variations on these tests that you can do to actually work out whether there's a fault on the cards. Um, so the verify feature was um, a stupendously um, effective tool um, and it's built into all of the V-series machines. So these are two cards that you've probably not seen before. Uh, we have a VidProc 2 and we have Key 2. Um, these were borrowed from the, uh, the Quantel Henry uh, which was their top of the line machine. Um, absolutely epic amounts of money to buy one of those. Um, so they were taken from the Henry and used in the HAL Express, uh, as I said, as an upgrade. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what these are, are doing. Um, what, I mean, video proc, I mean, video process, it could mean anything, couldn't it? But so one day I will find out exactly what these, what um, the vid proc is actually doing. Um, but until that time you can just ogle at all the uh, beautiful electronics. Um, notably there are a couple of big um, DSPs on here and there's a little bit of par um, um, parallel things going on. Um, you can see um, there's definitely a mirror here. Um, so there's obviously some parallel things going on. We've got um, a mirror down here as well so that is that is mirrored over there. We've got two of those, so there's definitely some parallel things going on on that card. And that's even more pronounced on the other card, which is the keyer. Um, and keying is where you take uh, one image with a, a, a key around it um, and then composite that over another image. So you're, you're basically blending two images together. Um, like you would in Photoshop with um, layer masks and all that sort of thing, uh, but it's all just done in dedicated hardware.
Right, um, I've got video capture set up. Um, there will be a text display over the top while it boots up, just so you can see that um, while it boots up. And the camera is watching the um, the front of the house. You can see all the lights flashing away because everybody loves that kind of thing, don't they? So let's just power this on. And hopefully it will boot up. So in this phase, what it's doing is loading the uh, software off the hard disk. Um, and then in a moment, it'll get to the end and it'll shoot a load of stars across the screen. Um, and that's when it's actually doing a verify checksum of the actual software. Um, it'll just be coming up any moment now. It does the checksum, that's fine, and then it starts the boot. So yeah, you can see it trying to find the Dylan, which isn't there. And at this point, it booted the main operating system and it's now trying to boot all the painting software. And there we have HAL up and running. Excellent. Um, so here we have a Quantal HAL Express. Um, so um, this is basically, uh, as it stands at the moment, without the Dill and Disc Array, um, this is basically acting as a very big and fancy paint box. So all the things that you've seen before in my uh, paint box express videos that I've done over the years is pretty much duplicated here um, The one difference is you've got a, a, an option here called clips and that's where you do all the video Processing, um, but I can't access that because there's no Dylan. So it basically just says um, there's no response From the Dylan and uh, that's it. I can't do anything um, So if I just quit back out We're back to painting so we've got all the normal painting things that we can do, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, stuff that a lot of the things you've seen before. Uh, because this is uh, the HAL Express with the paint box Bravo options, um, you've also got things like custom brushes. Um, so, uh, so we've just got a little star shape there. So you can actually create these yourself and actually do painting painting with them um, like that and there's various other um, quite funky features that you can actually do um, with the Bravo extras in the full page menu uh, there's not a lot here it's very much the same as uh, paint box um, there's a few things that are slightly different um, we've got a box here called um, advanced compositing um, and that is um, to do with the keying card that came from Henry. The advanced compositing is a feature that was on the Henry systems um, and has been brought over to HAL. So you can actually turn that on and off. So in effects and in the keyer, um, there is actually, uh, this is the same keyer that you get in the Quantel Henry. So it was quite an advantage apparently. And you have, uh, all the transform effects uh, functions in here as well so you can do there's so so many funky things that you can you can do with these yeah endless opportunities um, it's just a shame that I can't show you any of the video processing because we don't have that Dylan yet uh, so, before we get too involved and distracted, um, there's um, some images on here um, from its previous life. Um, these have been backed up and archived, um, but the, the machine appears to have come from 
ITV in Manchester, uh, so it's a local machine to me. Um, so there is actually stuff in here uh, from Granada TV, um, you can see ITV production. Um, so yeah, you've got things like here, um, various title cards and, and things. Um, yeah, various things for advertising and so obviously um, ITV be, being a, a commercial station, uh, they have advertising. Um, so yeah, there's a few few things in, in here of interest. There's some, some backgrounds that have obviously been, that's got TGA at the end of it, so that's a Targa file. So that would have been brought in over the network from probably a PC or something. They might, they might actually be renderings, I'm not sure. Um, so let's find, so yeah. Um, might give you some kind of clue to the things that it was used for. Um, some graphics for some program or other. I just love all these lights flashing away. <laughs> I could actually explain a bit of what that's actually doing. To so, um, when I uh, hit the down button, it, it needs to load in all the thumbnails for the um, the video. Sorry, the um, the cutouts. So what it's doing is it's loading that off the disc, passing it into one of the stores. It's then going into the image cards, getting scaled, and then placed onto one of the other stores to generate this image that I'm actually seeing on my screen. So there's a whole load of uh, processing goes on when it loads the, the image data off the disk, processes it, just to make up these menus here. Now you can see here we've actually got some some things from Anton Deck. Um, I'm not sure what they would have been used for. They're cut out, so they're probably part of an animation. Um, let's just clear off some of this. Um, So uh, yeah, I think these were probably would have been used as some part of some kind of animation that uh, they would have had. So thank you very much everybody for watching um, part two of the HAL restoration. There will be part three coming along very, very soon. Um, that is going to be looking at the video disc array which goes with this machine. Almost as big as this box and it uh, weighs just about the same as well. So it's going to be a bit of an adventure going into that one. So stick around um, and keep an eye out for that um, part three video for the uh, Dylan disc array. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.